We are I. What's that part of your mind or your body <clears throat> that that tells you to do something even though it really feels like you can't? And I guess like I'll explain this, you know, by way of like physical activity. So yesterday afternoon, you know, after having my uh my every two week, you know, air quotes break from the gym, you know, from Friday morning ending my workout at, you know, 6:30 in the morning. Um, until my next workout on Monday afternoon, which is like my, what is that, like three days? What is that, three days? Three days? Anyway, I train chest in the afternoon and then I train chest in the evening, but chest by way of like hard endurance, you know, assault, bike, repeated, you know, 2010 sprints, you know, for the full eight rounds on the echo bike and, you know, then just a lot of reps, you know, super setted chest. And the the morning chest workout was a little bit slower paced, heavier reps, you know, just more focused on, on that, just just the hard push. Now, both very different chest workouts, but both chest, you know, like one focused on heavy lifting, lower reps, and one focused on, you know, lighter weight, higher amount of endurance reps, both target, you know, in that hypertrophy range, but for different reasons. But at the very end of the workout last night, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, what, quarter after eight, 20 after eight, it's been a long day. And I decide, I knew I wanted to end off the workout doing something explosive for chest, but I'm like, you know, like, what can this be? So I'm like, you know, we've done a lot of like inner chest, you know, work, a lot of, you know, pec major work, nothing really on the incline, you know, for the upper chest, you know, in the evening workout. So I'm like, let's put a bench in between us, just one of the step benches, no risers, you know, so you're about, you know, three, four inches up off the ground, you know, hands on either side of the bench, chest down to the bench, explosively push off, land the hands on the bench, high plank, very minimal bend in the elbows to dismount then right back down to be able to cushion the landing um, into another push-up. So, but my chest and my triceps were just demolished by this point. You know, like you're talking a portion of this workout, like warm-up was eight rounds, 2010s on the Echo Bike, supersetted with, you know, by half-mile run, incline two, speed seven, times two, that was the warm-up, and then, it was eight rounds on the echo bike for the sprints, 40 pound dumbbells, flat bench, total of 50 reps, pound out as many as you can with the 40 pound dumbbells, finish off the rest of the 50 reps doing push ups, three rounds the first time, back onto the echo bike, you know, 20 tens for eight rounds, two rounds of that with the dumbbell press and the push ups, back onto the echo bike, eight rounds, 20 10 sprints, back onto the dumbbells, another two rounds. Um, it's supposed to only just be one, you know, but I managed to pound out two, you know, and then, you know, we move on to these explosive push-ups, 20 or just a regular standard ride on the bike, 15 explosive push-ups or 25, ex no, sorry, yeah, 25 on the first round and then back on the echo bike for a standard ride, no, no sprints, no intervals, then 15 back on the bike, then five workout done. Now, by the time even they got to the five round, like there was just, there was lots. But the one thing that I, I realized, and I realized this all through life, and I've talked about this on the podcast a lot, you know, and to everybody in my life is that if you think about it, if you think about anything in life, it just, there's this arduous task that comes around, just the narrative in your mind when you're about to do something difficult. But if you silence that noise, if you don't acknowledge that noise, if you don't bring that voice to the forefront. If you don't do that, your body and your mind will just do. And this is where I see like 
myself and a lot of other people getting in their own way is they bring that voice to the forefront and they let that voice dominate their lives. Like that's that voice that is like, you know what, man, like you're tired today. Don't go work out. You know, like that voice is the one where like, you've already worked out today. Why are you going to work out twice? You know, like that voice is like, you know, eat that donut, you fucking fat, lazy bitch. Come on, eat me, motherfucker. I know you want it. That's that voice that says, you know, don't work another hour today. That's that voice that says, you know, lay down and take a siesta in the middle of the afternoon when you haven't really done anything to actually deserve that. Not that that is wrong, but you got to make sure that you've deserved it at that point in time. This is that voice that says, you know, don't do this fun and exciting thing because you want to find all the negative reasons why. This is the this is the voice that wants to interject in other people's lives and tell them how to be able to live their life. Because you can't control your own shit. You can't control your own mind, your own demons. This is that voice if you just if you just let it let it be, not acknowledge it. Understand that it's there, hear the noise. Know that there's chatter. There's a whole fucking conversation going on over there somewhere, but you don't want to acknowledge that it exists. But it's hard not to because you know you want to eavesdrop in on that conversation because you know it's about you and you know that it's not something good. But you just try to silence that shit out. It's just noise. I don't want to hear it. It's just noise. My peace resides inside, I can find that area of peace. If you just operate there. You know, and this is that same voice that I said that the first time I really recognized this, I was in my early 20s, standing on the top of a 80 foot cliff in or at Cal Lake in the Okanagan. And I'm like, damn, this is high. Damn, this is high. I fucking just jump and I jump and I just jumped and jumped and jumped again. And I realized this every time, whether it be bungee jumping, whether it be looking over the edge of a, a cliff when I'm on the top of a mountain, anything along these lines that just gets those nerves riled up, it says, don't do this. It's like, you know, sometimes you should listen to that voice, but a lot of times you shouldn't because there's a lot of opportunity past that voice. It's that same voice that says, you know, like you don't have what it takes, Blake, to be able to do these explosive push-ups. You don't have what it takes to be able to do more. You don't have what it takes when you're at nine and you have to get to 15 and you're fucking trash and you want that, that voice to be real so you can just take that break. You know, like sometimes you don't need to listen to that voice. Sometimes that voice is a motherfucker. And you know, you got to put that aside. Because then you realize that you can and your body will. And this isn't even the zone where the stars align. This isn't the zone when you're in their flow state. This comes after that, those come after that. This is just that that doorway to get into your flow state. This is the doorway to get into that area where the stars will align and everything works out good because you realize that there's so much, so much more past, you know, where that voice starts to creep in and get a little bit louder all the time. So I'm going to keep it there because I want this to be short and simple today. But my question of the day is my question for you and question for you all is, do you have the ability to be able to quiet that voice? Do you give yourself the tools to be able to quiet that voice? Do you own that voice or does that voice own you?